eyes are more than just an organ. While hearts, stomachs, and brains are required to live, eyes do so much more. They help us communicate emotion, understand body language and human interaction, and appreciate the beauty in the world. How does a body part do so much in so little time? Light passes through the cornea and is projected into the receptors of the retina, which sends pulses to the optic nerve, which transfers these signals to the brain. The brain then analyzes the data and configures it into images we understand. The human eye is similar to the lens of a camera. So what happens when we create a machine that allows us to see more than we have ever seen before? The first photographic image was taken by Joseph Nicefore Niepce with a camera obscura in the late 1820s. Unfortunately, the image quickly vanished. Since then, the advancements in camera technology have been rapid and significant. We now rely on this technology to capture instances in time for many purposes, whether we hope to preserve a memory. Hi, Barry. <laughs> tell a story. Because when it hits, you're all going to wonder how you ever thought you could live so large. Or simply see more of the world than what was first humanly possible. Cameras can do all these things and more, but is there a point where what could be our best technological friend turns into our worst enemy? When do we see too much? And who's around to prevent us from seeing more than we should? Spytec opened specifically to sell surveillance equipment to homeowners, to business people, to monitor their nannies, for example, their teenagers, or to find out who's stealing from their home or their business. The company started in 1995 and I've been doing it for I think about 24 years or so roughly. We offer kind of a a broad range of services but with respect to uh, you know the use of cameras if, if that's where we're concentrating on it's primarily uh, either a, uh, a surveillance application or a security application we're, we're not a big um, you know CCTV camera kind of company I remember when we uh, when I first started out at it we didn't even have video cameras occasionally you'd use a uh, there was fellows that actually used film cameras uh, on surveillance, but mostly, mostly it was like photographs that were taken in the, in the days when I first started. A 300 millimeter lens that you could take long distance photos with. So you rewind it here and you snap the picture here. Focus here. And, uh, a lot of friends that I had and knew that were always worrying about what's going on in the house while they're at work. And when we found out about the hidden cameras and smoke detectors and so on, uh, we thought that would be an excellent idea to see, you know, to monitor the nanny to find out. Mm -hmm. no, of course, it's not high enough now. But you can see the whole room, you know, monitor the whole room, find out who's taking your merchandise out of the warehouse. Mm -hmm. uh, lawyers and, and uh, companies, governments and, uh, and insurance companies are our main clients. But we do do covert cameras, like if a person has a particular problem, like somebody stealing in a plant or something, then, and it's a specific area, then we'll install a covert camera system and, and uh, to be able to catch who's ever doing the stealing. Uh, the use of cameras uh, is in surveillance is evolving as well. Uh, the, uh, 
There's much more uh, stringent rules about videotaping people with uh, privacy laws now. Uh, most uh, clients uh, only undertake a video surveillance when they, they have uh, good reason to believe that, uh, that uh, you know, uh, something untoward is happening. So you pretty much don't videotape anybody in a situation where they have a reasonable expectation of privacy. So, you know, you wouldn't videotape anybody in a change room at a gym, for example, and uh, uh, you wouldn't videotape anybody, you know, through the back window of their house, uh, those kinds of things. So, uh, usually uh, the videotape that private investigators are taking these days uh, is of people when they're in public, for the most part. This is a popular unit here, because it can detect transmitters and all cameras. You adjust the sensitivity level properly. Oops. Okay. Never mind. This needs to be charged. Oh no. It's because this is on. See, so it detects it now. Wow. Oh, yes. something else is still going. Would yeah. it be our camera that yeah. is detecting? But this is the um, camera detector here. Mm -hmm. So when you look through here, it's got a blinking light. And you look at any camera, you can see how it blinks back to you. Mm -hmm. See the lens? Oh, okay. Yeah, so you can detect all hidden lenses. Uh, it's a double-edged sword. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, I think people only rec recognize the, the privacy issues, and, and nobody wants somebody secretly uh, videotaping them. But you know, when when investigators are retained to do so, it's for a legitimate purpose, for a legitimate reason. That's, in my view, uh, that's society's con contribution. You know, to allow yourself to be videotaped randomly at Young and Dundas because. Uh, you know, the police may need that to solve a crime, and that's your contribution to, to you know, keeping uh, peace and order in the, in the country, is to allow yourself to be videotaped in that way, knowing that, you know, people don't care, they're not going to store it somewhere forever and, you know, put your image on the internet or anything from it, unless you're the person committing the crime or perhaps you're a witness. Uh, you know, the whole widespread use of video around, around the world and the, uh, the pervasive, pervasiveness of it um, you know, has also a benefit to society. It's not just I'm, you're having your privacy invaded, you're also uh, gaining some, some protection from it as well. When I leave my house, I naturally assume there's camera everywhere. <laughs> and uh, which is, in my opinion, a very good thing. I'm more concerned when I'm in an underground garage or an apartment building in an underground garage if there's no cameras. I feel much safer when I know there's cameras around and somebody is watching what's going on. There's a cost to decisions that people make and part of that cost is, is uh, you know, you can't all, if you're making decisions that, you know, like you're gonna cheat on your wife or cheat on your husband, uh, there's a cost to doing them, making those kinds of decisions and part of that is temporarily at least, perhaps your privacy will be intruded upon at least to the point of trying to determine whether uh, an allegation is true or it isn't. As surveillance technology becomes more advanced and more covert, it's difficult to understand the ramifications. In this era of camera phones, CCTV cameras, and audio video recorders smaller than a button, you never know for sure who is recording you or why. The only control you have is deciding whether or not you smile for the camera.